Um, and lastly, verse 5 says, or the fifth point is this. Even though you can drink freely, it was not free. I think a lot of times um, you can look at this verse and see, well, you know, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. But if you look back just a couple verses, Jesus says, I will be with you only a little longer. No, return to the one who sent He was only going to be with us a little longer because he had to pay the price so that he could quench our thirst, so that we could come back to the Father, so that we could have our relationship with God restored. Um, it did not, it was not free for God and Jesus. It cost Jesus his life. It cost God his only son. Amen. So this was not a free gift. Well, wait, it is a free gift, but it was not free to them. Just, I mean, I think about if someone gives you a gift, most of the time, not always, sometimes they can re gift stuff, but that's besides the point. But most of the time, when someone gives you a gift, they pay, they pay for the gift and they give it to you. And when they give you the gift, they don't say, hey, that was $35. <laughs> you will look at them like, it's not really a gift. And so Jesus' gift to us is free to us, but it costs them something. And that, that should not be lost on us as Christians. That should not be lost because it, I think... A lot of times, if we think that it was just free and we can do whatever we want, then we, can't, we don't take God's grace seriously. We don't take His forgiveness seriously. Well, I can go ahead and do this because God will forgive me. That's not the right attitude to have. We should be obedient to God just out of our love for Him. Amen. Not out of... And that was the difference between the people who would come and drink of Him and the Pharisees. They were obeying God because of what they could get from God. We, as Christians, as followers of Christ, need to obey God just because He loves us. And just because we love Him. You know, I, I think of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who were getting ready to get thrown into the fire. And they didn't... And, and what they said was, you know, God is fully able to save us. He's fully capable of saving us. But whether He saves us or not, I'm still going to worship Him as God. And... and and I think what God is wanting from us is us for, for us to come to Him, surrender everything, have arms wide open. I have nothing to bring you, God. I just need you. I need to drink from you. My life is dry without you. And, and the reason why, or I especially like this passage, is I think it's, it's applicable to someone who's never heard about Jesus, who's trying to figure out whether he's, he's God, who He says He is, whether He's Messiah, or whether you've been a Christian for 30 years. Because there is no other way to have a vibrant life apart from Jesus Christ. So whether you're here today and you have been going through this Christian walk and you feel kind of dry, my encouragement to you is to come and drink. Come and drink of Him. And whether you're here today and you're trying to figure out, well, maybe, you know, I've been going to church for a while and I thought I was a Christian, um, but I've never really just came and drank of Jesus. I've never just sat at His feet and let Him love me and just thought about His attributes. Surrender my life to him, arms wide open. Maybe that's where you're at. Um, and I would encourage everyone in here today to come to him. His arms are wide open. He doesn't want you to carry burdens. He wants you to drink from him, to have life through him. And uh, as I get ready to close, I just want to share another story. Uh, about a couple weeks ago, I almost chopped off the tip of my thumb. <laughs> I had a... I had a... A low wire hanging on my back patio. I think it clotheslined Amber a few times in our life years. And uh, so uh, I asked Andy uh, if I could cut it down. He said, yeah, you know, I didn't know if I would cut it. And, you know, everybody's phone lines would go out. So um, he said I could cut it. It wasn't really affecting anything. So I got, you know, I, I would, scissors would be too simple. I wasn't going to use si simple. I had a pickaxe. It's the only thing I could find that I thought would cut it. And this thing's huge, and I'm carrying it, and I take one chop, and I'm like, oh, it almost cut it all the way in half. This is going good. And I took my second chop, and it was just a bunch of skin, but I knew it was bad as soon as I did it. And so I didn't even look at it. I just put it in my shirt, wrapped it up. I went in the couch, sat down, turned the fan on, cut the lights off, and I'm just like, oh, man, I hope this goes away. <laughs> if I could just sit here for a week, if I could just sit here for a week, I think it would heal itself. I'm definitely not as tough as Brian. I know I'm a big wimp. <laughs> And so I knew eventually that if I was going to fix this thing up, I had to look at it. And so after about 15, 20 minutes, three hours on the couch. <laughs> just kidding. I think it was only 15 minutes. That's what I'm going to tell you guys. Uh, I went over to the sink and I was like, oh, I don't want to look at it. 
And then I opened up and looked at it and you know, it's just a flat of skin. It looked worse probably than it was and blood was coming everywhere. So I poured some peroxide, cleaned it up, and you know, put the band-aid back on. But when I think about that story, I think that's what we do in our Christian lives. Our lives are messed up, they're ugly, and all we want to do is we're going to hide them and cover them up and we don't have to deal with it. Like I was going to sit on the couch until Beth had thumb healed. I was going to get a call from work and everything. <laughs> and I think sometimes we do that with our lives. We have stuff, we have junk, and we don't want to bring it to God because we're afraid of the, the cleaning process. I also went with peroxide, it stink a lot. <laughs> And so the cleaning process hurts us sometimes, and we don't even want to go through it, so we just cover it up and hope it goes away. And the cool thing that I just want to encourage you guys today as I close is that don't do that. <laughs> don't do it. First of all, don't chop your finger off, but also, God is not here to harm you. I know sometimes it's really scary when we have all these past hurts, these past pains, you know, these past sins that are just haunting us. And we, we can't get rid of them. We can't shake them. And we just want to hide them, shove them in the closet and forget about them. But Jesus' invitation to us is, come to me and drink. And so my challenge to you guys today is I, I would want to, I'll be up here to pray with you guys. Whether you want to, you know, start your relationship with Jesus or whether you just have been very dry and you want to come up to him and drink. I'd, I'd love to pray with you guys. But my, my final encouragement is don't just hope it goes away. Because it won't. It'll still be there. Don't try the things to fix it. Because they won't work. The only thing that'll work is Jesus. So I love you guys. I'm going to pray. And then we'll be done. God, I just uh, I thank you for your word. I thank you uh, that you were willing to pay the cost for us to have a relationship with you. God, I also just thank you that we can come to you messing all. Sins, past hurts, past pain and all. And just lay it all before you and let you heal us. God, you are so awesome and you are so amazing. And I pray uh, that each of us in here today would have just a deeper um, desire to be more intimate with you. And so I thank you for your son, Jesus. And it's in his name I pray. Amen.